full sanitation. Then I did great in all levels. I went on to do A levels, and there was nothing like full sanitation in those. I mean, in in the uh, selection of courses. So I did economics, I did um, literature, and I did those days religious studies. And then I started abandoning the dream of being a dietitian because I was getting excited about the economics and I wanted to do banking and finance. So I almost forgot about being a dietitian. And then did A-levels. I passed, but my results were not that great. And they were not great enough for me to get a good course at the university. I would have gotten maybe one simple diploma course. I didn't want that. So it meant that I had to um, rewrite some of my papers. And um, those days when we finished, you did A-level national service before you did national service after university. So I did national service in Ghana Telecom. Com. Now it's Vodafone, but those days it was P and T before it became Ghana Telecom, they separated and then it became Vodafone. So I stayed on and after that, I took steady leave and went to the university. Now when I got admission to the university, when I was choosing, I chose home science. When the courses came, I saw home science and it was quite close to being a dietitian. So I chose home science, sociology and psychology. And then by some deed, I changed the home science because when I was going, and to university, anybody who got excited that had gotten admission would ask, what course are you going to do? When I said home science, I didn't like the look on their faces. So it looked like serious people don't go to university to do home science, you are going to cook. So I started thinking that I had made a mistake. I would have kept it, but some event led me to change my mind. So I went and changed to economics. And economics was very competitive, it was very selective. And that was the time I thank God. I understood why God made me get good grade in math, O level math. Because I wasn't that great. And my grade in math was so great that you would think that I was great in math. But that day, I realized why God did that. Because you needed to get a great grade in math to be allowed to do economics. So I did economics major. And then I did sociology, psychology, dropped. sociology after first year, did economics major, and minored in psychology. So when I finished, I went back to Ghana Telecom because I had taken steady leave to go. And when you go back, who do you report to? Which department? HR? Yes. So somebody who has done economics major wanting to do banking and finance. So I should have gone to the finance department at least. I report to HR. HR looks at, head of HR looks at, oh, you did economics major here dismisses that and says, but you did psychology minor, stay in HR because we need psychology. That's how I fell into HR. It wasn't even planned. And I loved it because it, it resonated with my wanting to do with people development. So I stayed and I stayed in HR. Then one day I said, ah, but I wanted to do banking and finance. What led me here? So I said, okay, in order to fulfill that dream, I would apply to a bank and go and do HR in a bank and then maybe move from HR and go to mainstream banking. Then I would achieve my dream. So that's where I moved from Ghana Telecom to Barclays. And those days, even the way I said the name Barclays, I mean, I said it with, you know, swag. I was excited. And I went and did HR in Barclays, but I didn't move out of HR. I went on to Echo Bank. I didn't move out of HR, stayed in HR, and it looks like my dream of um, doing banking and finance got buried because as of now, I don't know, it's a bit too late, isn't it? But will you, wouldn't you ask me about what about the dream of wanting to be a dietitian? It's still a passion in my heart. I don't know if one day I'll do it because th that kind of passion doesn't go away. But why have I told you the story? I want you to pick little nuggets from it. One, sometimes you will fail, but that will not be the end. Sometimes you will make mistakes, but you have to pick yourself up and then repeat as, in, as it were. Sometimes you will fall off the rail, but God will have a way of navigating your journey back and putting you back on track. Because I must tell you that I'm, I'm very passionate about human capital. I'm very passionate. I, I love it. You know, it, it was something that, but for that head of HR, 
It was never a dream of mine, but somehow I found myself there. And who knows, there may be one or two people I've impacted because I'm in that field, right? So I'm sharing these stories with you so that um, you can put your stories there. Sometimes you get stuck along the way. You don't know how to navigate your path, but trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. But now we're going to mainstream. Please move it back. So this is um, an outline. I, I hope you can see a brief outline of what we're going to discuss. What I said initially are the icebreakers, just for us to have a conversation, just to tell your story. Now we're going to talk about career prospect pointers. What is going to, and, and I will get there. I looked for the meaning of um, career or a job. And I will get there and give you the right meanings from Cambridge and all that. But what he said was that sometimes it's a trade, a job that you do, mainly to be, I mean, mainly a paid for job. And prospects also means that um, the possibility of having a success in the future, right? So when we talk about job prospects, we're talking about what, what pointers should we have such that as we move on into the future, we get um, 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 successful in, in our plans, right? So this kind of a summary, so we're going to talk about the pointers. I'm going to mention lifelong learning, professional certification, soft skills. Uh, we need to be techie savvy. You need to have a winning CV. We'll explain what a winning CV is. You need to have an online presence. You need to have skills for interviews. At first, I put interviewing skills. Then I realized that when we talk about interviewing skills, it is those of us who are the recruiters. We need interviewing skills but you need interview skills or skills for interview, right? And then there are a few others and then we'll conclude. So I'll try and make that very brief and so we get into the Q&A. All right, so next slide, please. Be with you shortly. Okay. So the next slide. Yeah, basically when we're talking about improving your job prospects, basically we're talking about improving your brand, your brand as a person. It is when you improve your brand that you increase your prospects, your job prospects. So everything we're talking about, so we're going to talk about, is about improving your brand. So you as a person, you know that you're a brand. Yes, sometimes if we are not very conscious of that, we let ourselves go. So how you present yourself. It's very important. So let's move on, please. Okay. So the first um, point I want to speak about is lifelong learning or continuous learning. And sometimes, okay, so I'll tell you a story of my sister. I have a sister. She skipped one class so she would miss the JSS program because she was, uh, that was the introduction of JSS. So she skipped one class and went to secondary school, finished, went to University of Ghana, did one year, and then she took, uh, she went on holidays in the UK and deferred it for one year. So when she came to do her second year, her mates were in um, third year, right? She did second year, she went again and she didn't return to Ghana. And she was a brilliant girl and left with her last year. She stayed in UK and she didn't come. Brilliant lady, but she says, I won't learn again. Now, fast forward to recently, she wants a promotion in her job. And she's been told that there's a particular course that if you don't pass, we cannot move you to the next point. And this is somebody who I had told that do certification in your area. She said, no, I'm done with learning. And now she has to take that course because she's stuck where she is. I'm telling this story because sometimes when you finish JSS, you think that it's enough. But even if you have JSS and you're a shop assistant somewhere, as you're doing the shop assistant job, continue learning. Try for HND, try for a first degree. If you have first degree, of course, these days, everybody knows that it's like a middle school living certificate. So when you finish, you must get a second degree to, to add value. But what I'm talking about is lifelong learning. 
And some of us have had to do it the hard way because it isn't that we didn't love learning, but we let family life and other things curtail some of the things. And you realize that you never stop learning. And let me tell you why. When we were young, they told us that there were nine planets in the world, right? Now we are told that Pluto is not a planet. So we have to unlearn that. When I was learning management principles, we learned 12 management principles. One of them was that you sh one person must have one boss. You can't have many boss. It was a crime. But these days, with the digital world, the matrix system that we do, we have, you can have more than one boss. You can have an administrative line of reporting. You ha can have dotted lines. Is that right? So the world is evolving. Knowledge is becoming dynamic. So if we stop where we left off, we'll be left behind. So please, if you don't take anything away at all, remember that learning never stops. If you want to improve your career prospects, learning never stops. Learn and learn and learn. And when you're learning, it's not just academic learning. The world is, is, is a classroom, right? You can learn a trade. You can learn, uh, you can get experience. It's all learning. So that's the first thing that I want to share with you, that continuous learning. And for you to get the, um, the job you're looking for, you must have the appropriate qualification. You know that. So sometimes maybe we don't have the qualification for the job. That's why we're not getting the job. And we must face it. So we must find out what is lacking and we must add on onto that. And I wanted to state here that uh, with informal jobs, the critical preparation is training. So we must train and train and train. So for instance, even if you're a hairdresser, these days there's the MBTI. You don't just go and do uh, apprenticeship, get certification. If you're a mechanic, get certification. And I believe that um, you are all gathered here hearing me speak in English. So I believe that there's some basic education that we all have, right? So we can read and write, right? Yes, and that is all we need to move on. So continuous training. And the next one is get certification. Move on to that, get certification. Because you see, you must stand out. Everybody is going for a second degree. These days, a lot of people are doing PhD. But the, your area of expertise, get professional certification there. So you see that the marketing people are doing um, CIM. Is that it? The, yes. That's certification. And there's a certain level, I think level seven, when you get to level seven, the equivalent is like a master's degree. HR people have certification, SHRM, and then CIPD, the UK version. There's project management, the accountants have it. In every field, I'm sure there's certification. So if you want to improve your career prospects, get certification. And then what I want to add is that there are a lot of online courses. Online courses, free online courses. I have just put a free site here for Sarah. Free. When you go to, to uh, um, EDX, you find courses that investors, uh, Ivy League universities, Harvard, um, MIT have posted there. You can do them for free. There are some that indeed you have to pay something for certification, but you can even put that on your CV. I've done this course, I've done this course. Some are four week courses and it is free. You don't have to pay any money. So there's um, um, Alison, there's Khan Academy. There's, these days there's LinkedIn Learning and there are several of them. These are just a few I put there. So please online courses, do that, add it to your CV. It makes you stand out. It makes you different. It makes 
give you um, 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 more experience or more knowledgeable in certain areas than the next person. Let's move on. The next one is improve your soft skills. What are soft skills? Soft skills are the ones that they don't teach in the classroom. It comes from practice. So I've just given some examples here. Leadership skills, teamwork, attentive or, or active listening. You, you'll be shocked. You th we think that we listen, but it's, it's a skill that people um, apply very well. Um, time management. Today, some of us were late to church. If you take that to the workplace, it will go against you. And a lot, it's, it's a thing in Ghana. We, we're all late. So you stand out if you're not the late person. You stand out. So time management, being punctual, is a soft skill that will give, get you ahead of the, the pack. People will notice. Uh, adaptability, being versatile, being able to move between departments and between roles, working with different teams, learn them. And these are things that they don't teach in the classroom. You, you, you might have some theories around them, but when it comes to acquiring them, it comes by practice. So being conscious and practicing it. And there are many others, but I just mentioned these few. The other one is being techie savvy, technology. Unfortunately, in your day, this is, this is what makes you stand out. So if there's a reason why you're not getting a job, sometimes it's this, this is one of the reasons. Uh, recently, we were looking for a driver in our place. Guess where we got the drivers, the, the, the shortlisted candidate from? LinkedIn. A driver who puts his CV in LinkedIn is a very serious person, a driver. And of course, they, they, they didn't come cheap. But that is where we went looking. These days, recruiters, they don't have time. So they know where to search for them. So um, um, you have to be taken. And being techie survey means that you know a lot about modern technology. It means that you, are, you have ability to use technology to provide solutions swiftly. You use technology to provide solutions swiftly. And my executive chairman, there's this young man in his office. The guy, what the guy does mostly for him is to do his PowerPoint presentations for him. And guess what? Wherever this executive chairman is traveling, he goes along with him. Switzerland, everywhere, because he knows that he will need him to set it up and navigate everything for him. So that alone is making him a rich young guy. Every day he's collecting per diem. You know, he's a genius, but every day he's traveling outside. So he's already building up um, a house. Many seniors don't have houses, but why? Because he's techy savvy. So these days you must know how to use the devices. So do you, do you know about Teams? Have you heard about Teams? Thank you. Okay, so Teams, I think it's the Microsoft um, virtual, sorry? Okay, okay, you have heard about Zoom, right? These days everybody knows about Zoom. But Zoom, after 40 minutes, if you haven't paid for it, it goes off. But the others that come, you can use without limits, right? So there's Google Meet, that's the Google version. There's Teams, that's for Microsoft. And sometimes you go to certain companies and they tell you that, oh, we use Teams. And if you haven't heard about it, how do you even fill their online application form? You know, so you, we must get doing these things. All the time that we go on YouTube and listen to the gossips and all the Efia Schwarzenegger stories and things, you know, I mean, let's spend time building our skills here because there's a lot of gossip there and sometimes you get attracted. But let's get building our skills here. 
So I was talking about virtual conferences, right? And you must also have digital presentation skills. It's very key. And then you must be able to operate the devices very well. Now the next one, and I wish that I will spend quite some time on it. Yeah. Developing a winning CV. Developing a winning CV. It's, 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 it sets you apart. The way you present your CV sets you apart. And I'm saying that you must keep it simple. You must keep it concise. Because you see, recruiters don't have time. Sometimes we think that um, we must say everything. It, it, some of them are not relevant. The ones that will win you the job is what you must say. So your CV is your brand. It goes ahead of you. It precedes you. Before anybody sees you, they see your CV. So it's important that that brand very well. So um, it markets you, and you must tailor it to meet what the, the, the employer is looking for. And let me just say that in our days, there are days that people write it in their hometown and the food I like on their CVs. Who met those days? You did? Yes. You know, these days, it's even politically incorrect to even put your gender there. Because we don't want people discriminated against, not because of the LBGT thing. But before they, they became prominent, it was, we didn't want anybody to be selected on basis of gender. So you normally will not even put it there. You know, so that if your name is like Leslie, they won't know whether you're a lady or a gentleman, because it's a unisex name, right? Yes, but the point I want to make is that there's a way of presenting CVs, and I'll be brief about it. You, you put your best foot first. If you are a graduate who doesn't have much work experience, then you showcase your qualification first, especially if you went to grade schools. You showcase that one first. Please let me know if I'm running out of time. Right. So um, you showcase that, that first. And so if, if, for instance, I have declared I'm very biased in favor of people who went to Ashasi University because my encounter with the first set of graduates prejudiced my mind. So I'm, I'm biased. So it would, you would work very hard to fail if you went to Ashasi, if you came to my interview. More especially if you're a lady and you went to Wesley Girls. I didn't go to Wesley Girls but I am biased towards the ladies there. So if you went to Wesley Girls and you went to Ashasi University, yes. So if you meet a recruiter like me and you showcase the fact that you went to Ashasi, I'm very much interested in your, invest in your, your CV. I'm not saying that you must all go to Ivy League universities, but I'm saying that, for instance, if, what, if the course you did is a prominent course, you showcase that first, right? Otherwise, Otherwise, if you, do, if you don't have job experience, that is when you showcase your qualification first. But if you have worked, it is your work history that comes first. The, the, see, the qualification follows. So you show what you have done. And it's, it's not just the positions that you've held, but the key achievements that you've done in those positions. So um, I tried to put in my own CV, but I think I, in a hurry, I didn't do it well. I just wanted to just give you an example of how I do my CV. So it won't show well, but I will tell you how you do. First, your name must come, and then your, your contact. And please, your, your, your email address is very important. There was this guy who used to write Kwame Stylish at yahoo.com. No recruiter will take you serious. Or um, I'm a baby at something. No recruiter will take you serious. So if you want to use that, get a professional email address. Yes. And then your telephone number must be there. These days is the quickest means of reaching you. So your email address, your telephone number must be at the top. And then your address must be at the top. Then you might normally have a summary of your achievements, summary of your profile. Just a summary. Sometimes some people call it a personal statement, but just a summary, a brief one. And then you go on to talk about your employment history. And then it's very important that you showcase what you have achieved in those roles. So for instance, if you were an accountant and you saved the company 100,000 CDs because you introduced a certain software, you say that as a key achievement. 
those are the things that recruiters are looking for. So I, I just want to say that in passing because it's a whole um, um, session when we're talking about CVs. But there are some people who are specialized in, in helping you do your CVs, but they charge money. But they, you can also learn that skill from, from, from the internet. Or we can also organize a, um, a session to teach you. I want to do this. How many of you are employed here, unemployed here? You don't have a job, please stand up. Oh, we are blessed. Oh, you don't have a job, okay. Please stand up, don't keep standing. Four of you don't have a jobs. Okay, I do, I do not want to embarrass you, but you have academic backgrounds. Yes, this is what I want to do for you. Four of you, so give me your names when we're going. I will help you develop your CV. In fact, my, my daughter also does that. We will help you develop a winning CV. We will, we will coach you on attending interviews. Then we will also pick your CV and connect you with recruiters, right? So the four of you. So please let me have your name before I go. And then we, you're in your phone numbers and we'll communicate. But your, your CVs are very important. And one thing I also want to say is that you must have a standard CV. But whenever you see a job ad, you must tailor the CV, right? You must align it to the, the demands of the job. So look at what they are asking for and see the skills that you have and tweak your CV to meet it. Make it a winning CV. Let them know that you are the one they are looking for, right? So there's a way of doing CV. So we, we will talk about that maybe some other time when I visit you. Or um, next week when the, you have your career fair, I'm sure that in conversations, those things will come up. Now, the next thing is you must have an online presence. If you don't have a LinkedIn, and I, my, my LinkedIn, I, 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 um, I, I, I'm at fault myself because I haven't updated my LinkedIn state. But if you are young, you must have a LinkedIn presence because that's where recruiters go. And LinkedIn is not just for a jobs. Now you post even um, articles that you've written, career developments, and sometimes you are there, you're not even searching for a job. Somebody will headhunt you. Somebody will just go and pick your CV and call you and say, we want you and we're making this offer to you. So if you want to improve your career prospects, get online. presence. And let me say this. Recruiters go online and check your background. So if you are on Facebook and you are misbehaving, we go and check. If you are on YouTube, and I'll tell you a story. One of the companies that we oversee, one of them is a media company. And there was this lady from another country who had reached out to us and said that she was coming to live in Ghana because she had a fiancé here and she wanted a job. We looked at her profile. We spoke with her. She was good. We were just about to make her an offer. Then one day we chanced on some YouTube um, um, presentation that she had made and all the things that she was saying. Everybody said, this lady is going to give us trouble when she comes. We canceled it. Of course, we won't let you know that's the reason why. Otherwise, you might take us up legally. So that's what recruiters do. So when you are on TikTok and you are doing all that, yes. Um, so... So the advice is, if you, you must watch your settings. If, of course, we know that people have fun. So sometimes 
we want to see the other side of people. We don't want even to see just the serious side. But I'm saying that we Christians, we don't do that. We don't misbehave. So it's not for anybody in this room, right? But there are people out there, and recruiters go and check them out there. So your online presence, as much as I'm encouraging you to have online presence, make sure that it's quite professional, right? Because we check. So look at your social channels. See if they are employer-friendly because we do that. So go there, tidy all your sites. And if you still want to have those ones, adjust your settings. You can do private settings so that no recruiter will see you. But your, your public profiles, Make sure that the posts are what are, are, they are professional, right? Okay. And then you can also follow um, companies. Sometimes the tweets and things that you, 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 you put out there, they, 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 you interact with them. So you can follow them, especially companies that you like. You can follow them, track with their interests and all that, right? Okay. And um, the next one I want to talk about is interviews. So please shift it. Okay, so before you shift it, you can read this. We're saying that when you're developing a winning CV, the challenge is that it must be appealing and more attractive than the rest. It means that your CV must be presented professionally. And if you don't have many years of experience, your CV shouldn't be more than three pages. My CV is four pages. In fact, my daughter, who, who is an expert in doing CV, she wants to make it to one page. And I've told her that over 30 years of work experience, you can't put it to one page. But she has a one page CV. It's just punchy. Because you see, people who don't have time, especially multinationals and, and big companies, they don't have time. They just want to see the punchy ones, not the, the, the recitations, that, the rhymes that you mentioned. People will just go and state everything that they did. So it must be very punchy. So my CV is um, four pages. And so when you come and you see people with seven-page CV and ten-page CV, you know that there's something wrong. Then there's something wrong. And nobody has time. They will miss some of the good things you've done. Because they will go, go through quickly. So your CV must show that you possess the right skills, knowledge, and abilities that the employer is seeking. Let's move on, please. Okay, let's move on. This was my CV that I was trying to show. Let's move on. Okay, so we've talked about it. So let's move on, please. Yes, we've talked about online presence. Yeah, we want to talk about interviews. Communication skills is crucial. Communication skills is crucial. So if your English is not good, it depends on the job. There are certain jobs that do not require that you have uh, excellent English. But even then, even as you rise up the career ladder, you'll be expected to write reports. You need to if English is not good, it's not too late. We can learn. There's um, I've forgotten the website. It's a word a day. Every day they introduce a new English word. 
um, it's, it's from a dictionary. I forgot which one of the uh, I think it's Merriam Webster. An English word that you can read, pronounce it, but you can do it through reading. You English is crucial. If you want to work with a reputable company, and you want mainstream job, English is crucial. So your communication skills. And when we talk about communication skills, it's not just about English. It's even about how you you present. what you're saying, the order in which you present it, how articulate you are, is very important when you're going for interviews. And I will not say much about interviews, but when you go, you have to be very confident. It means that you have to research, go to the website of the company, read about them. Gone are the days when, when we went for interviews, they'll ask you, Okay, name five presidents in Ghana. Do this, all those as if they're doing mental. But these days, they do aptitude tests. Some companies take you through aptitude tests. So it means that you must have basic English, basic math, basic critical thinking. But when you go, sometimes I interview people, and when you're done, you say, do you have any questions? They say, oh, no, I'm okay. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make you shine. Listen, you definitely may have a question on your heart. So listen, ask a very relevant question, a question that is quite sensible, that will set the recruiter thinking. So you, you must have interview skills. Where you go, you must appear well. Uh, it doesn't mean that you must wear uh, suits, but you must look very presentable. You must have the right demeanor. You know, you must appear confident. You see, we're not expecting that you know everything, but even you don't know the way you present what you don't know is it's even attractive you know when you don't know something and you let us know i don't know but this is how what, what i think and i'm going to find out or research we don't expect everybody to know everything you don't sit there and by the way don't allow yourselves to be demeaned when you go for interviews because when you go for an interview it's a two-way affair the company wants to see whether they want to recruit you. You also want to check them out if it's the company you want to work with. So if you don't fit their profile, I mean, it's as good as releasing you to go. Don't let anybody put you down. You mean you don't know this? Why did you go to school? Don't let anybody do that to you. Of course, don't be rude at the interview, but don't let that get to you. It's not done. It's poor interview skills on the side of recruiters. But this is so much for recruit uh, interviews. I want to move quickly. <clears throat> okay, I think, um, move on. Yeah, so, yes. This is one last thing I want to talk about, maybe last but one, that you may be in a current job because Assembled here, maybe people who are looking for jobs. So who are looking for opportunities to gain a job. There may be people here who have what I call a place-holding job. It's a job that you don't like, but you want to put body and soul together. So you've held on to it, but you're still searching for another job. And then there may be a third category of people who are in fantastic jobs, but hey, if a better one comes, they will take it up. So I'm saying that improve your performance and increase productivity in your current job. And there will be somebody here who says, I don't even have a current job. But maybe you, you may be interning in a company. So when you're doing internship, make sure you're performing because they are watching. Even if you're volunteering for a company, make sure they're watching, you're, you're performing, and you are, you, you are standing out because they're watching. And they would rather have you than go outside and pick another person. Then the last slide. 
just a few more that I said, a few of the skills, learn a language if you can. There was a time in Echo Bank if you couldn't speak French, they would not employ you. Then at a point they saw that, well, they were limiting, so they brought in a lot of us and they gave us French um, lessons. But sometimes because we're surrounded by Francophone countries, there are jobs that come that requires that you know a little bit of French or some other language. These days it's Spanish or German. So it's an added value if you have a, another language. Learn a pastime, a job, a, 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 a hobby, you know, uh, learn how to play an instrument, learn how to do a program, IT program, learn a pastime, and then networking is very important. Um, there was a company that I worked with, they never advertised in the newspapers. And I'll tell you, Echo Bank, we never advertised in the newspapers. We believed that if we brought you in and there was a role and you recommended somebody, you make sure that you recommend somebody that fits our, our what we call our DNA, right? And it would be an embarrassment to you if the person you recommended didn't fit. So it was always word of mouth. We will do internal adverts and tell people those days. I don't know whether it's changed, but we never advertise. So it's very important that you have net good networks where pe your people are passing on your CVs or recommending you for a job. So um, please move on. Okay, move on to the last but one. Go on. Go on. Okay, so this is in summary. What we have discussed today, we've talked about continuous learning and lifelong learning. We've talked about taking professional and online courses, improving your, your soft skills, being techie survey, building a winning CV, update your online presence. We have talked about developing skills for interview. We've talked about increasing your performance and productivity, and then all the other ones that we've done. Next. Thank you. I, I, I hope I didn't take all the time. So it's Q&A, questioning and answers. So I am available to answer any question that you put to me. And if I'm unable, I have have colleagues here who would support me here. Any questions, please? Okay, madam, thank you so much. I want to ask, is it possible for a student who is still in school let's say level four and about to complete, to use his academic transcript to apply for a job, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Some companies do not mind, right? But you must be an exceptional student so that you can combine studies and work. Because these days we have a lot of flexi working time. Some people work online, so it's possible to to, of course, you must tell the truth. There's, and by the way, if I didn't say this, don't lie on your CV. It's, it's, it's a risky thing to do. But it is possible to apply for a job. And your, our regular jobs do not maybe encourage this. But there are lots of companies, young companies coming up that you can, you can be a student and still work for them. Have I answered that question? Yes. In an, in an instance where you have a skill for a particular job, because probably you've learned on the job, you have acquired experience on the job. However, 
um, when it comes to certificate wise or educationally, you are not really, you don't have the qualification. If you are preparing the CV, what are, wh how do you prepare it apart from maybe outlining your uh, achievements in those areas? Is there anything else you can add that will give you an added advantage? Um, it would be your experience. It would be your experience, what you just said, your achievements. Right. Because, but I would also advise, and and when I say this, it is not to put you down because we've all been there. I would also advise that uh, the way that the world is going, it will be good to get the academic contribution. Like they say, just for shaky reasons. It's not like you can do the job. There were times that in the banks, you didn't need a degree to work there. You know, from high school. So there were so many people in the system who didn't have a degree but who had built careers to the top. But these days is changing. So it's very important. But let me also add that um, you can swift roles. I have a friend who did psychology, went to the US, joined the army, and then left the army and went to pharmacy you know so um as you stay in the job if there's another career that you think that that's your passion as you work in that job you can start doing certifications and courses towards the other one then you can you can change you can present it to HR and change your your, your department right but really your best bet is your experience. And then experience also um, practical. If, if, if somebody's vouching for you, if your line manager is vouching for you, if your team members are vouching that this one is a top worker, then, then, then it's good for you. Yeah. But sometimes it's difficult to swift between companies. Your company might appreciate you, but some other company might be looking for qualification. Is there anything you want to add? Mm -hmm. Thank you, madam, for the uh, very good message giving. Um, my contribu I have a small contribution for the youth, especially the students. Getting an internship is also a small form of experience, which is good for your CV when you finish school. And that is something that comes at no cost. And it's good for, to, I mean, there's, there's a, difference between no no work experience and some bit of work experience that we should take advantage of so students here should make sure that at least two or three times of their during their university career they join an internship scheme and then get some experience even Thank if they you. don't get any allowance for it right exactly. Thank you ma'am and I and I let me say this in person because we have parents here and prospective parents here. And we must be mindful of the educational model that, that we give our children. The system, the national system is a national system. So for the influencers and the policy makers, that's another conversation. But for those of us who are parents, as we, as we nurture our children, we must develop both sides, the, the, the creative side and the analytical side. It's very important, very, very important. So let them learn practical skills, right? Leave them to, these days we appreciate football and all that. So it's very important as parents, as we nurture it, because the system itself is not doing right. So we should start from the homes, right? Ma'am, thank you yes. so much for the presentation. It's very insightful. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke about lifelong learning. I wanted to find out whether we are really talking about just classroom learning or other skills as well. Other skills. 
other skills, classroom learning, yes. Classroom, not even classroom learning, but reading, reading and, and updating ourselves in knowledge, right? Because like we said, Rev, what we learned in the classroom, we might not go back to a classroom, but we'll find out that what we learned is a kick. So the only way to find out to be abreast, I like engaging with young people because that is where I, I tend to learn a few things from them. So I, in my career, I like engaging like, uh, uh, young people. There was this HR form, employee new form that you fill, right? And one day I gave it to a young person and she said, this is not 